So the Helios 44.2 video almost has 350,000 views, which is not that many. Not a lot for my channel. <clears throat> Just a hundred times the amount of subscribers I have. That's it. So my mind's kind of blown. And honestly, it doesn't really feel real. But I've never had so many requests. So, so many people have asked how I colored that video. And honestly, I think you'd be surprised on how easy it actually is. But before we hop into this, I'm gonna preface this with the same thing I preface, press, presses. I'm gonna preface this with the same thing I preface all of my other coloring videos, and that is, I am not a colorist. If you guys are looking for good color tutorials, I'm gonna link a few down in the description. Highly recommend you go check those out. But I'm gonna show you how I got these colors specifically in this video. But yeah, so this whole grade can pretty much be accomplished with just three nodes. Okay, so here are the three shots that we're gonna be looking at today. We have this first one that we opened with. I do like this shot because the subject comes in focus. Um, really a big fan of this one. I like how it pans down. And of course we got the beautiful colors in the back there. And then we have this one where she pulls the branch down here. And this one where she comes in focus. We're gonna hop into our color tab here. The subject for me here and kind of the catalyst of the shoot was that yellowish tree. I really, really loved it. It was so vibrant and it was very contrasty against all, you know, the dark greens around. So that contrast was really cool. And we saw that opportunity when we went out and shot it. It was super, super cool. All right. So this is just the straight S log footage. This is where we're going to add our conversion light. So when you're converting your log to rec 709, you can really use any conversion light you want, or you can just use the tools that DaVinci has built in the color space transform tool super great but for me and what i highly recommend you look into is Joel famularo's phantom lights if you've been here for a while you know i talk about these all the time that's just because they're really freaking good sorry about these bird noises by the way if you're not this thing is so loud if you're not aware they are a conversion LUT, but they do emulate the look of the airy alexa cameras and my goodness, they do it so well. If you don't see your camera supported on the list that he has now, don't worry because he may be adding support for yours in the future. I filmed this interview a few months ago back with him, never ended up making the video and I still have plans to post this video, but a little down the line. But I interviewed Joel Famularo himself and we talked about the future that Phantom Lutz had. Some people were asking uh, if you would ever, what other cameras you were going to uh, port these LUTs to. So I'm working on five right now. So the Canon just oh my released gosh. this week. Yeah. Wow. I've got Mavic, <laughs> Mavic 3 coming. Oh, my word. Next. Then Red Komodo. Then uh, Panasonic S1H slash, I think, S5 and S1H okay. have the yeah. same sensor. So that's kind of all for the, for the new Panasonics. And then the sixth, uh, fifth one is the Black, uh, the Black Magic Ursa Mini Pro G2 because I've got Black Magic Pocket lights. Yeah, I get a lot of emails from guys going, "What about my Ursa? Will these work on the Ursa?" And they do work, but there's it's just a little bit off because every sensor can be different. So yeah, he's launching support for different cameras. He now has Canon, Panasonic, and DJI out now, I believe. We're gonna go ahead and convert our footage from Log to Rec 709. I'm going to use the neutral phantom light. The colors are not affected at all with this one. It's just a conversion plus the Alexa emulation, but it doesn't have any kind of creative tones like you know, you're gonna get with tungsten ice blue or more extreme with the film looks pack where if you were to go with bleach or something, you could get the high contrast that comes with that. So we're sticking with the neutral light because we're gonna add anything we want ourselves. So we have the most flexibility here. As you see with just that it looks so good instantly. It is a bit dark, so we're gonna go ahead and adjust that here. I'm gonna go to the first node. I'm gonna pull up the offset just a little bit. Perfect, I'm gonna bring back down the lift. So pushing the shadows back down. That just raises our exposure a good bit there. We can accomplish the same thing with a S curve if you did want to do that. We're not going to push it all the way to the bottom and not all the way to the top because I don't want to crush the blacks or the highlights. So right here seems about fine. All right, and in this same note, so in the original grade, I pulled back the greens, desaturated them and darkened them to make the yellow and the orange of the tree really, really pop. And so we're going to do that here in this first node. To do that, there are two ways we could do that. We could go to the hue versus saturation curve 
or we can go to the qualifier. Both of these tools work. If you know how to use them, then it's very simple. So let's try the hue versus saturation. So obviously the greens are what we're gonna to try to tone down. So we're gonna go ahead and select a wide margin of the greens here. And then if we pull down, you see it doesn't have that much of an effect right now. So if we go maybe a little over to the sides here, you can see here in this area that we are very much affecting the greens but we're still leaving these pretty untouched. So we can go ahead and widen our affected area just a little bit. And we don't wanna to go too far to get the skin tones and the yellows of the tree. So we're gonna very carefully kind of sneak into that. And there you go, you see we very much are covering all of the, the greens there. So that is more than enough for me. I like that a lot. I might come up just a hair. So it's not super desaturated. Just that simple tweak there is great. You do have a bit of green down here still, but honestly, I had that in the original and I think that looks fine there. And the next thing that we did in the grade was take the yellows of the tree and make them pretty orange. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. I really wanted them to pop even more and I think the orange really accomplished that. Like I said, there's two ways to do this. You could qualify it or you can use the hue versus hue tab. Now, if it were a little more orange, you definitely want to use the qualifier because you are getting close to her skin tones and you really want to be able to dial that in. However, here we're quite a bit off. So we are able to pull a good hue versus hue curve here without affecting her skin tones. So say if we were to have this a little wider than what we're supposed to, you can see when I desaturate it, just I take it to the extreme, we are affecting her skin tones here and we do not want that. So we're gonna go ahead and take it to the extreme and move it in to where you don't see anything on her skin tones at all. Maybe a little bit past as well. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and bring it back to reality. And when we move this around, you see we're affecting the color of the tree and not the subject. So if we wanted to make the tree super green, we could, that looks horrible, <laughs> or we can push it more toward that orange that we really like. So here's before, and let's go ahead and make it a little orange. That looks beautiful there. Now you could go ahead and even push it further if you wanted, but that's getting a little too far for me. So I think, once again, this is before, pushing it a little more to about right there looks great. There's a before and after, before and after. Here's a before and after, there you go, of just that one color there. Now, if we actually take both of these nodes here, disable them and then enable them, here's the entire grade before, so all the greens have not been affected yet, as well as the yellows and after. Very, very simple grade. Perfect. That's where I left it. If you want to go ahead and go the extra step, you can go ahead here, create another node and go into the qualifier and pull the skin tones. The forehead is a really good spot to pull from. So if we go ahead and qualify that, you see we're getting a bit of the tree there. Narrow down our selection here to where we're isolating the skin tones. Perfect, so we're just gonna adjust this around here until we get it dialed in enough to where we're happy. All right, so this is honestly just good enough here. I'm not going for perfection. Uh, honestly, this is totally unnecessary here. Uh, but we go ahead and go into our vector scope and you can see we are leaning a bit towards the yellows. If we do want to go into our gamma here, we can go ahead and push that a bit towards the magenta and uh, let's see what kind of an effect that we have there. We're bringing back a lot of those reds. Honestly, I think that's a little too far. Right, so we're going to go ahead and pull that back slightly. You can see before and after, before and after. You can always come back in here and tweak things as much as you want. Until you're happy with it. So here's a quick before the grade entirely and after. Before and after. Perfect. Like I said, this is a very, very simple grade. 
So we're going to move on to our next one. Here we are. We have her pulling the branch down. We could literally go ahead and go into our color tab. We could just copy the grade of this one, making sure this is selected, right click on this guy and hit apply grade. And you see we're already most of the way there. There's a few things you're going to want to check. Make sure that the colors Make sure that the colors that you're pulling from, you know, the yellows are not affecting her skin tones here at all. And it looks like we are getting a bit down here. If you look at the neck there and on her cheek, you are pulling a bit of that yellow out. And I think that's fine there because it's just the yellow reflecting from the leaves back onto her skin. Now that's pulling out and that's fine. Now after editing, that yellow isn't there to begin with. So I'm not going to worry about that at all. I think this looks great here. We're gonna check our skin tones into our vector scope. Make sure if you don't see this line, you're gonna go ahead and go into your settings here and turn on show skin tone indicator. And if we go ahead and hit shift H on this node and see only what we're selecting, we could add a bit of blur here to make it a bit softer so you're not getting any pixelations. So we're adding a hair of redness or magenta back into her skin here just to balance out some of that warm tone we're getting from the leaves. All right, and then the last one here. Once again, you can literally just copy the grade. Your colors are gonna change from shot to shot. You don't wanna just blindly mass copy these. Go ahead and go into each one, check and make sure that it's actually affecting the colors that you want it to affect. You can see here, our skin tones are a bit too magenta. So first off, we hit shift H and see what our mask, our qualifier here is hitting. And you see it's super pixely. So we can go ahead and go into our qualifier and try to kind of get rid of some of the areas that we don't need. We can actually pull up the luminance here. So we're just affecting the skin. Beautiful. That honestly is good enough there. Since we're making such a minor adjustment, it doesn't really matter if we have a super fine mask. Say if we were making a super extreme one, you would see any kind of issues and pixelation effects on there. That's not a big deal for now. If you have any previous effect on any of these wheels, you can just double click anywhere and it'll recenter it. We can hit shift H to see what our skin tones are looking like. And you see they are pretty much on this line perfectly. Now, if you remember, if we went back to the other one, we were not riding that line. We were very much towards the yellow. Here, we're very much getting those very accurate skin tones. So if we want, we could just adjust them very, very slightly to get them more centered there. But at that point, it is such a you really can't even see a before and after of that. So that is totally fine. Skin tones here already look great. All right, now let's look at what our orange is affecting. You can see in the background, the tree that's kind of out of focus with a nice Helios bokeh. This is looking great. And then let's see what our greens are affecting here. You see all the green on this side is being desaturated as well as all the green up here in this tree. So guys, I hope this helped you all out. Let me know if it did. I'd love to hear what you have to say. And hey, if you feel like I deserve it, which I do not, um, you should totally hit that subscribe button. Really only if you feel like it. But uh, if you don't, you should do it too. Because um, I don't know. I can't really think of a good reason. I don't, I don't know. Check out one of these videos or one of those. Those are good ones. Yeah. I think we're done.